Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. We're focused on Germany, but we're really playing the Soviet Union. We're going to liberate the world from prosperity and freedom and get equality of misery for all. Okay, well, hmm. Let's see, who do we have here? Nikita Khrushchev? Hmm. We don't democratic reform. That wouldn't go over well, Prince of Terror. Okay, there is Nikolai. Yes, oh, that's who I was talking about. And they don't even give him his real picture. That's one of the sort of fake pictures that Paradox does. So we'll put him in charge, Prince of Terror. And it was, I think, around June or something like that that he comes in. Yeah, that is part of the problem with, with, with the aristocracy and British attitudes. There is, how do I say this? Nouveau riche, the new rich, will always look to the old rich for certain social and other sort of guidance. Well, once I stop talking, I think you probably stopped hearing it, but I do like the new sound thing because that cut off a very loud motorcycle. Um, and so they'll they'll try to they'll try to get adopt the or ape we'll call it ape the attitudes of the you know the those that were there before them, and so that they tend to get bad habits that way or are they well they get bad and good they get good and bad habits from them and so um it can have a bit of a corrosive bit of a corrosive effect oh absolutely usa man that's why i was saying in the start of the last episode that the soviet union is one of the great tragedies of the 20th century I think the only the only nation that had more people die in it um, is China. And I'm not talking about people die because of either the Chinese Civil War or the Chinese War with Japan or deaths in the Soviet Union that's directly relatable to um, the German invasion for whatever reason. I'm just talking internal deaths. Um, not directly related to the Soviet invasion or World War II or whatever you want to say. Um, but I would contend that Mao would not have been as successful, would not have been successful at all without Stalin's help. Stalin, Stalin did not want Mao to take over. Stalin feared Mao. Stalin wanted Mao to go into partnership with um, Chiang Kai-shek. Neither one of them would have had it, though, but that's what he wanted. But with Stalin's invasion of Manchuria at the, towards the end of World War II, and the Soviets' absolute no use for Japanese um, captured equipment unless it was simply to melt it down, and a desire to sort of keep um, uh, both to keep Mao in the game, as it were, to be a check on, because that's what I think he thought at the time, a check on Chiang Kai-shek. He, fe he feared Shang Chiang Kai-shek and a modern China. He also feared Mao not so much as a military threat, but as a political one, Maoism. He, he was, Stalin wants to be the guy in international communism, and he fears that Mao could replace that. Hey, Chris. And so he fears Mao in that sense, but he also fears Chiang Kai-shek as having a um, rival superpower to the south. So um, 
He wants them in partnership. He wants them in contention. But so basically he gives instructions that all the Japanese equipment that the Soviets capture and taking over Manchuria, which is hundreds of thousands of rifles, because there's probably a few hundred thousand rifles just in the Manchukuo army. Um, but all tanks, all artillery pieces, all ammunition, all that stuff to be turned over to Mao's troops. Without that, or without Soviet aid of, you know, given, um, you know, armed shipments, Mao would not have been able to defeat Chiang Kai-shek, in my opinion. And I'm not an expert on that. You can dispute me and maybe have very good arguments to dispute. Um, and I do know some of the reasons why Mao wins is not that. But I don't think the other reasons would have counted enough had he not had Mao not gotten that massive inflow of uh, arms and equipment. That's right. Mao killed more people. Yes, he, yes, most assuredly. Tendency to want to become part of the establishment, basically. Why we never have a revolution? Yeah, that's part of it, and because your your establishment um, may not welcome in particularly the first generation, but aren't at least mostly hostile, like you would see, say, in Russia. You know, um, I'm, I'm you know talking czarist Russia or something. You wouldn't see, at least I don't think you would see the idea of merchant class people becoming aristocrats. Um, or being allowed to live like aristocrats and being social, even if they're not given titles, being socially acceptable at high levels of society like aristocrats were in, in Tsarist Russia, where you have definitely that kind of thing going on in Britain. I'm Again, I'm not saying there isn't like old, 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 arist, old aristocratic families looking down on the new richer people, but they weren't nearly socially shunned, and especially if they had daughters that could marry into the old family and give them an infusion of cash, they were quite willing to accept that a lot more. So Britain, Britain's lack of a, rigid, a truly rigid system, where like you say, you see definitely like in Louis XIV through to Louis the Sixteenth, because it's really... Um, Louis the Fourteenth really locks down that aristocracy, and by the time you get to Louis the Sixteenth, it's so totally locked down. You can buy your way, in, and people do buy their way into the aristocracy in France, purely by buying their way into it. But because it is still such a small, limited group, um, it's why there's a revolution there now. You do, of course, do have that whole. English Civil War thing, which is in essence a revolution because they get rid of the king and whatnot. Okay, let's see. Where do we go from here? I, you know, I've never played this before. Great Purge. Well, still a little early. I think it's more late thirty-seven, early thirty-nine. You give NK the time to see. Oh, Trotsky is returning. No, we're not going to do the Trotsky yet. Ocean research battleship models research air doctrine. Infrastructure. Okay, this needs all three of them to go. Don't know what the PCDI is. Anti-fascist diplomacy. Looks like that could be useful. Okay, socialist reform. All right, go to communists. Or go to capitalists. What are we talking about? How do you reform that? Collectivist propaganda versus positive heroism. Hmm. To, to me, this is what um, they were doing at this time, but it's mutually exclusive, which with this one, now this one gets us Gregory Zukov, which we only start seeing him at Cock, Cock and Gaul. Um, rise to premise, or prominence, I should say, rise to prominence. Uh, available military I can't go. Progress cult, okay. Socialist science. 
militarized schools, workers' culture, women in aviation. I guess we're going to go to positive heroism. Well, what is, oh. What? Hmm. Okay, that's this. So we can get the extra research slot a little later going this way. Aviation cult, the new Soviet man. That was kamikaze strike air mission, suicide attacks against enemy ships. See, socialists don't like people. They just don't like people. Socialists, I don't know if hate people is the right term, but they just don't like people. Also oh, British. Okay. Um, you said realism not reformed, by the way. Oh, you said realism not reformed. Oh, I get you. I was misreading it. Okay. Um... Oh, socialist, yeah, realism. Okay. Now, um, modify the government. Let's see here. Stability, well, we're not very stable. Stability would be good. Vera. He's not around. Yeah, and they, they make sure that, uh, Nikolai's gone. That's an interesting story. Maybe we'll tell it someday in the series. Um, civilian infrastructure, okay. Democrat. We don't want democratic reformer. We're not doing. Okay, well, let's do another Nikolai here. Get construction speed up a bit. Yeah, no, no Hearts of Iron 3 today. Um, I'm going to, because it's a different thing and there's some other sort of YouTube strategy things, I'm going to make the next um, Hearts of Iron 4 series, the real one, I think just on my own and then post it to YouTube like I've done the previous series and not do it as a live stream and then chop it up and put it on later. Yes, Warplan is on Steam now, and that is a good thing. I did hear that. Um, uh, they did state, just if you do have Warplan, and they did state, that they will give you a Steam code if you ask for it, but you need to ask for whatever sort of, um, wherever you go in and ask for it. They'll give you a Steam code if you want it. Um, if, you know, if you've already bought it through them, um, they will give you a Steam code if you, if you prefer to have it there. As opposed, or it doesn't negate going through their system as well. Um, but yes. Wait, a free game? No, 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 it's not a free game. No, it's just if you've bought Warplan through their website. Um, I, I can say something because I don't know anything. I'm just sort of... Um, uh, shall we say, reading between the lines from what I do sort of know. I don't think they thought... I'm okay. I'm not sure about this. What I th think is the case is they either did not think War Plan was going to be such a success, or, and or. They thought War Plan needed um, more work, me, but including a lot of shall we say. Ask, you know, um, harsh testing by all of you playing, trying doing all the different things and seeing if the game breaks. 
they needed that before they went bigger with it onto Steam. So they kept it just um, for sale through the Slytherin store or through Matrix or whatever. I think it's Matrix. Um, through the Matrix store. And I do know Alvaro, the, the primary developer of Warplan, was very, very pleased and I think um, somewhat surprised at how well it was selling. So, um, well, thank you, Chris. And so he was very pleased with how, how well it was selling. So I think it, I don't, I'm not saying I'm sure it surprised him because he, I didn't, he didn't, why did I do that? Now let's cancel this. I want us no cancel. Yes. Okay. Cancel. I want us another, no, 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 no. Cancel. I want a civil society or factory here. We're trying to build up our civilian production capabilities. Um, so he um, was very pleased with how well War Plan was selling. I know. So, and I think it's continued to do well. It is a very good game. It isn't Hearts of Iron. Which can both be a good thing and a bad thing. Hearts of Iron 3 is better. For a person who wants a more closely aligned game to history, Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice and all of that is better. Hearts of Iron 4 is too easy to go off the rails is a little too in my opinion and i guess this is all just my opinion is a little too um draw battle lines and watch the thing fight out compared to um manually doing things and i like the manually doing things better that um war plan and strategic command do better so each of these games have their strengths I like Warplan. I like it a little better than Strategic Command. But I like Strategic Command. And I I know both sets of devs. I stream for for you know for them. I like their games. Now I'm mostly and I will be streaming some Strategic Command World War One. And since War Warplan is all now if you want to play see and this is where oh and I, I guess I should say um Strategic Command War in Europe, because it's just war in Europe is all of um, what Warplan does currently. Warplan is better. But if you're looking at Strategic Command World at War, it's definitely better because, or if, if you want to do the whole thing all at once, because Warplan doesn't do that, you know, the, the, the whole war. So that's, that's definitely obviously doing that better. It's doing the whole war better. And World War I is doing a very good Europe focused thing. Hello, Philippe. How you doing? Good to have you here. Yeah, the difficulty problem is still a problem with Hearts of Iron 4. Now, I haven't been drawing lines. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to try to fight the war when it comes. I was thinking a sort of screening line along the German border, a thin line of divisions, and then maybe sort of Riga, which they name these rivers, I don't know, through, and I don't know this river without a thing on the map, sorry, down through here, hold this river line as my main primary hold, and, um, with a, shall we say, three central reserves of armor and motorized troops to try to deal with the breakthroughs. At least that's some thoughts I've had. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Okay, I really, hmm. don't know if we need to waste on... Okay, let's look. I'm just so not used to 
Okay, we've got 97 oil. And as we go through this will be 10% each time more oil. So I don't know that we need to do synthetic stuff. Rubber might be a thing. I don't know. Don't know if we'll just be able to trade for it. Uh, British Art Ministry, mostly sense of noblesse oblige, and the surviving old money by current engines have gotten good at looking the part without spending as big as people think. I know for a fact that before Camilla got with Prince Car or Prince of Wales, her massive grand dining table was actually a ping pong table with a very nice table. Uh, very interesting. I did not know it was a ping pong table, but yeah. My mind, the darkest hour has the best balance between levels of complexity and game feeling and so-called levels of reality. Now you're talking about uh, dark, um, darkest hour based on the Hearts of Iron three or Hearts of Iron two engine. Is that what you're talking about? Or because there's also a mod out now called Darkest Hour. I have not played for Hearts of Iron four, so um, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. And I'm not going to presume. Which one you're doing, which one you're talking about. Pocket defense. Hoy. Okay. I, I own the game. It's on my, um, uh, you know, um, Steam account and all, but I've never played it. So I cannot, and I also own um, Arsenal of Democracy. Again, I've never played it. So I cannot intelligently... We want to get to the extra research slot, so let's push down this way. Um, comment on that. I won't disbelieve your evaluation. It's probably quite correct. I just, I started with, um, Hearts of Iron, in the Hearts of Iron 3 days. So, I've not played earlier, so I, I really... There was a couple of times, because I got, when I started with it, it was with For the Motherland. It was out as the DLC. After playing for a while, they came out with um, their finest hour. I almost raged quit a couple of times. Um, but fortunately, I found Black Ice, and that got me over most of my serious problems. Yeah, I should try it sometime. Uh, it's just, um, Philippe, uh, just time. You know, the question is, sh should I spend 100 hours? Because you're not really to put it in. If, if it's a decent game, I'm going to spend 100 hours or more in it eventually, uh, learning it and playing it. Um, or should I spend 100 hours modding Hearts of Iron 3 Black Ice? You know, I, I, some of what comes down to, to it. And I, I'm not in any way trying to dismiss it or that it's good. It's just... Um, what do we call it? Um, emphasis. What, what, you know, where should I focus on? Man, this could really use a nice events mod. Okay. Um, Kyle Colin and stability. Well, we are pretty low on stability. So let's go with that. That'll pump up our radios. I don't know. 
What would you use them for? I can't quite imagine. OBT tanks will do that. I wonder what would have been the reaction of the Soviet soldiers if they had gone to war with the Western allies after World War II, you know, like in the right immediate, you know, in 45. I wonder what the Soviet soldiers would have done going to use 20 width divisions or 40 width divisions. Um, hmm. I'm, well, I'm looking, it's here, I know, somewhere. Um, I normally don't pay attention to quote unquote width I normally try to build some sort of historically reasonable division and some people say well that's why you do so bad with some of these games yeah because they over min max whatever and they build their mods for it where's width here um, why am I not seeing width oh combat width 18 okay well I'm planning on definitely having you know um, support elements you know in this thing as well as over here meaning more artillery and that type of thing eventually um i don't know what the total width will be whether it get to 40 or not thanks usa man you think the reaction would have been to shoot the commissar and join whatever free russian army yeah and this is what i i i wonder what it would have been because You are having defections, significant defections to the Germans um, into 1944. And I would, now I don't know what the perception of your average Soviet soldier is who, who probably is not well versed on the world, um, but it kind of, to me, sort of looked like the Germans were losing the war. And they, there were defections to the Germans at that point still. So you're defecting to the losing side. Um, socialist science. And so this Stalin and Stalinism, as well as just simply Bolshevism, and those are all different things, Three, the three things there were very negatively thought about by many in, in the Soviet Union. Um, there, cause there were a lot of people that were socialists, shall we say of, and as well as communists that might be described as Trotskyites or something like that, or just others that hated Stalin. There were of course, a lot of ethnic minorities that hated what they saw as Russianism going on there's a lot of a lot of stuff in the stew there that kept people de defecting to the to the soviets i mean to the germans from the soviets and i wonder especially fighting in germany and poland and czechoslovakia and whatnot i don't know how much the soviet soldier wants to die for those those things now i don't know what the allied army especially the british army if it's willing to fight another war against um, the Soviets, there may be problems there. 
Is there a movie about that? Does anyone know about a hypothetical war? I don't really know of any war like that. In Napoleonic times after World War II, I don't quite get that. Oh, well, Man in the High Castle, yes. That's for that. I can imagine some committed suicide. Um, basically, all of the POWs um, go from being POWs to going to the gulags. Um, a lot of people that had significant contact with the um, West ended up in gulags. Well, we're going to need anti-tank, because the Germans are going to have tanks. Okay, well, now that we're in 37, we're going to start building up some military factories here. And I think we're also going to... Increase our intelligence capabilities here. Cryptology? That looks like a good idea. Well, search, I guess, for Operation Unthinkable or something like that. Um, Fun fact, this game economy is broken because resources cost connections with production lines and not with the unit of equipment. Yeah. Trade is, is an interesting thing. They pulled money for the game for good reasons, but I think they overdid it by pulling all money. But you can see the problem, or taking money that's in Hearts of Iron 3 and see how it sort of turned into problems when you look at what Black Ice is doing with, with money. And because money really didn't, there we go, good, we were, we were going for that research slot. Money really didn't matter much to much of these economies, not all, but much of these economies for production for things uh, for the, you know, particularly during the war, but even before the war. Irrigation techniques. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, we'll see what they give us choice. Oh, well, I guess I guess I've been waiting for an event to do so. Um, I'm used to the idea of an event going on, but that's a good idea. So let's create. We have a huge army, don't we? So what? Let's see if we can. What do we have here that we can create? It's a very good idea. That's a very good idea. Gregory Zukov. Tanashenko. Hmm. 
we'll give Ivan the chance. And let's see, let's let's see if we can throw on what does the mountain division look like? I quite honestly I haven't even looked at their templates. Okay, that ain't bad. We'll do that. And can we do two or three divisions? Oh, these are NKVD units. Okay, we don't want to send them. They're weak. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a decent order of battle. Just make sure this one is too. Okay. Okay, hopefully we can send all five of those. Okay, um... Oh, we could send six. Well, let's throw on... Um... Well... Okay. Thank you, I wasn't even thinking about the Spanish Civil War. Silly me. Okay, so they're they're heading out. The British Army was yes, they were definitely exhausted by forty five. Can't bomb. Yeah, air volunteers as well. Good idea. Good idea. Let's see, what air units do we have to spend, send out here? Okay, um, fighter wing, fighters, tactical bombers. Okay, those, we can do that. Um, we gotta get permission. No, 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 get back to here, get back over to diplomacy. Look in there, um, send volunteers. Okay. Let's move all of these guys all down to here. They won't let me go down to the... Okay. Ooh. Can we cancel this? Damn, I wanted the bombers more than I wanted additional fighters. Um, uh, hold their wings. Let's see if we can send these. Guys, there we go. Yes, we probably should do that. Come spy master. I think we'll get. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Where are my divisions? Oh, well, it would be helpful if we were over here. Look this way. Okay. Hmm. We want to make sure Madrid isn't lost. So let's move. Rush one tank division faster because we just don't want to lose there before anything happens. 
Let's move you here. That will leave us two tank divisions. Come over to this one. I'm not sure the exact total, and I don't know if it's based upon size of Air Force, my Air Force, or um, size of um, or just if there's a, a straight up limit. I don't know. Uh oh. Oh, we we had our. See this? Um, I think is a bit overdone. That it's its own sort of faction. Because we have to take these guys out. Now. I know there are definitely different factions, but I don't know that it really... Get there, come on. Oh, damn. Okay, now come over here. Come over here, because we don't want to attack across the water. We gotta retake Madrid. Okay, got the BT-7s. So now we have Christie-inspired tanks. We'll increase our... Okay, if anyone could take the USSR in for it, it would be the USA. It might be some serious losses at the start, but the idea of fighting the Reds was definitely in the minds of the U.S., and I'm guessing the British troops, the Polish, would no doubt be thrilled. Yeah, um... Vanilla is easy... It's too easy for fun. Yeah, hello. Um, Maxin, I'm strembushing greetings from Russia. Yeah, I'm not good with Cyrillic um, pronunci or getting pronunciations from Cyrillic. Um, yeah, because I'm, we're playing as USSR, which um, I have no problems with Russians. I hate the Soviets. Um, And I'm sure talking about what might have happened had they gone in. You do have a lot of um, propaganda potential for the British, but particularly for the Americans, because they, I mean, particularly for the British, but also for the Americans. Because Britain goes to war over what? Poland. You can go, we got to liberate Poland. It's not necessarily about conquering the um the soviet union hello azad um you could put it as but but liberating poland and that's the goal you could definitely have that for propaganda purposes yes britain was exhausted by that point you can see that in their fighting techniques after from d-day onwards they were exhausted um You had a lot of propaganda about Uncle Joe in the American media, and it might have been a little harder to sell it to the American soldier going after the Soviet Union. And you had literal, literal revolts going on in the U.S. Army 
when they got informed that, yeah, now that you've defeated Hitler and the Nazis, we're going to send you over to, because most of the planners, as in 90 plus percent of the planner, high, fairly high level gen, general planner, did not know of the atomic weapons even existing, let alone any plans to bomb Japan. So they're planning for an invasion of the Japanese home islands. And the U.S. is like, hey, we only have 100 divisions capable of going overseas. And we have these really spiffy divisions over in Europe. And let's send them over to get ready to invade Japan. And the American troops just basically revolted. Um, didn't, like, actually shoot anybody or anything like that. But they just basically said, hell no. Our war was to fight Hitler. Japan, you know, our war. The, the, the Americans that fought in Europe. Our war was to defeat the Nazis. We've done our war. Let other Americans, including those already in the Pacific theater, but other American soldiers go fight the other war. You know, recruit new divisions. Get get divisions that didn't just and you know finish fighting in, in Europe to go over there and fight in Japan. Now, Japan's whole war and fighting and, and whatnot is very different than Europe, and it would have been a Big mistake to send European divisions trained and experienced at fighting in Europe and send them over to um, the Pacific. And even the army divisions there fought differently. It was a different type of fighting. And all the way down to the squad tactical level. But, but you know, and they were often... Like there was like three divisions on, you know, one of the larger islands, like, oh, I don't know, Okinawa or something. Or maybe a few more on Okinawa, but on some of these divisions, on some of these islands, there's like two or three divisions. And like one of them is an army and two of them are Marines or something. And the Marines definitely fight different in sort of um, strategic level fighting all the way down to tactical. And the army is different than the Marines over there, but definitely different than how the army fights in Europe. And trying to then take all of that and put the Americans over, Europe, the, the ones that fought in Europe over there, would have been a big mistake. Just that fighting techniques were different. You would have had lots of casualties just trying to get their, you know, situation stabilized and functional. So that would not have been a good idea, but that was our, their war's over. I think with the Americans, if you present it, if you hit them with enough propaganda fairly quickly enough, liberating Poland, the, the Soviets aren't living, and you can just claim they're not living up to their, um, their agreements. We have to go in and liberate Poland. I think they would have fought. But, you know, I don't know. Just sort of interesting what-ifs there. But now he's goes to war on the continent because of the possibility of the creation of a new... Yeah, they, they, yeah, they don't want a new he hegemon. It, in, they want it... Um, Britain want, wants to have a balance of power on the continent. That's for the war. Hello, James. Yeah, you know, you you just you, you just orchestrate an inch an, an an incident with the um Polish government in exile. Um and stuff trying to go back into Poland and that's sort of how you 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 create the situation that would get the Americans. Okay, we've retaken Madrid. Good. Let's use the armor division there, too.
Thank you, frog leggers. And I do hope it is a discussion. I do like your all of your inputs on my topics. That's what I really like about the live streams over the um, Spain relocates its gold reserve shipments uh, from Spain have begun to arrive in our country as the Spanish government is moving their gold reserves abroad for safekeeping for the duration of the Civil War. Perhaps this spells an opportunity. Let's see what decisions we have here. Hmm. Nothing I really think we need. We've got reasonable stability now. I'm not used to having this much force to be used in Spain. For a moment. Does there exist any evidence for it? Not that I know of. There's a whole movie, well, there's one movie that I found a little hard to watch, which was sort of patent in the hospital afterwards. But um, there's an older movie that, um, oh man, it's been so many years, that there was an assassination attempt against um, Patton. Okay, extra research slot. But I think it was more, forget who was the assassin and all of that. I don't remember, but... Um, Oh, we can recruit another spy. Yes, good. Do that in a moment. Yeah, I think we need to do this. Well, before we do that, let's recruit another spy. Yeah, we'll do Kim Philby. Um, production more. Uh, so that big bit. Anybody needs a history lesson on World War II? Thanks. He, yeah, well, well, this movie hypothesized that um, an assassin was sent to silence Rommel that used a, um, like an air rifle or something that um, fired sort of a blunt bullet that wouldn't necessarily break the skin, but break his neck kind of thing if i remember correctly and it's been you know 30 years since i've seen the movie um and we definitely know that there's a car accident in, involved in the whole thing absolutely but the question comes down to was that just the incident staged to kill him or was there some other thing going on Yeah, now, mentioning SOE and sabotage and the Soviets, there was a large amount of um, U.S. and Britain, they both had their own agendas, in trying to collect Nazi agents to... Um, 
shall we say, penetrate the Soviet Union in one way or another. Uh, no, we only want to come over to this here, I think, first. Um, to get information, to get um, spies, all kinds of stuff going on. And there was doing a lot of that stuff. And, you know, politics is perception. Warfare is a political act. So if it's sort of sold, pushed on, hey, we're going to go conquer the Soviet Union right now, that would probably fail with both American and British soldiers enough to, oh, we need to keep moving and keep attacking. Uh, but if it's Hindenburg disaster, but if it's sold as a, um, you know, hey, they killed, they killed our beloved Patton. Hey, you know, they did these other bad things. Hey, this other stuff going on. You could try to sell it to the people at large and the soldiers generally that, you know, you're not done with just... Um, defeating the Nazis. We have to free the world. And that, I think, could have been a bit of a thing. Make design bureau fighters, carrier fighters. Don't need strategic bombers. Naval, we don't need, so I guess it's make. Yeah, continue the Great Crusade. Scout planes, um, we don't really have any, I don't think, right now, and I I'm, don't know that I'm going to build any. get them over here. I think we're just going to stick with this. Yeah. And that was sort of the, some of the hypothesis, if I remember correctly from the movie, was I'm going to come here, I think. Okay, well, how is our, well, let's, yeah, we have BT tanks, let's, let's switch production over to this, and we have anti-tank guns, which would be nice to produce, so let's get some anti-tank guns in production, that will definitely help with Didn't we already do a railway network? I thought we did. I don't know. Maybe somehow I stopped that. I don't know. Oh, um. What is this? Oh, this is producing through a bunch of them. So let's just go to one. Um, nope. One. We only want one of these. And then go on to some of the others. Let's. Yeah. I really don't want serial production of them right now. Yeah, Yak very well may be the historical choice, but. And I may have made a mistake in my pick, as in what would be. Um, there, but I just saw all of the carriers, is what they improve. Oh, let's pause this for a second here. And um, I'm not planning on doing any... Uh, I may do naval bombers, but I'm not planning on doing any carrier operations. And Aleutians, um, 
that wouldn't have been a bad choice for a tactical bomber. But I just thought controlling airspace, having better fighters, would be the um, better targeted. Not enough benefit for the effort. Well, see, this is what sort of got me thinking about this. What would the Soviet soldiers' reaction to a Western Allies' war? Man, these guys can't. Okay. Well, we don't want to attack across the river, so let's just go there. And we'll defend. Um, would the Soviet armies collapse enough that the whole Stalinist regime collapse? That's sort of what I'm wondering. Yeah, well, I didn't make this stuff. So I don't know what and why some of these choices are are as they are. I just look purely as a, you know, what is functionally look like benefit thing. At least to Spain, that would be a good idea. Okay, let's see. Start lend lease. That would be really good. Okay, um, let's just send them a lot of lot of junk. Um, do they need fuel? Give them fuel. Hmm. Sort of already have our air force. So let's give them that. Yeah, we're skipping tanks, but we're giving them that. We must whack the living shit out of them, you all. They had access to more industry by then. Well, they had access to industry, but I don't know how um, effective that industry was. By 1945, the Soviet Union is completely exhausted when it comes to manpower. So their manpower, they, they can't raise any more troops. They're, they're, that, that's done. So um, they've sent in, and this is where part of it is, they sent in the army into... Uh, Manchuria and that's the last of their sort of fresh troops and it's on the wrong side of the world so um, no they did not they really they got a hold of briefly the um, Graf Zeppelin because they wanted the carrier but it sunk it got it got loaded with all kinds of war booty uh, from Germany and got sunk on the way back to the Soviet Union. Um, German-Soviet treaty capitalists were threats to both of us. Yeah, um, we'll say yes. Good. Good to know. I didn't know that the MiG was the best high altitude. I definitely know that things like altitude are um, a real um, issue with some of the aircraft, meaning some aircraft do well at high altitudes, others do well at low altitudes. But I am not an aviation expert and definitely not a Russian aviation expert.
I just wonder what interesting things were on that ship that when it went down. My understanding, the flight decks and whatnot were just filled with with stuff. I'm not quite sure what that stuff was, but I'm trying to open up this corridor. Okay, this is this is. I wanted to get to this river at least, but uh, well. Okay, you can support the attack there, but don't advance into the province. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, come on. You guys suck. I don't know if I didn't get into this fast enough. We should have more troops. Okay, air power. We're switching. Okay, you switch to here, you switch to here. Move railway network, good. Yeah, I get your idea, Azads, that they had enough to beat it. But my question was, what was going to be the, what would the Soviet soldiers' reaction be to fighting the Western Allies? It wasn't so much did I think the Soviets, who would win in a battle. It was much more Spanish growth. Um yeah, we'll seize the gold reserve consumer goods factories. Yeah. Thank you for the gold. We appreciate it. And I don't know what the reaction would have been. Because you got to remember, they'd be fighting Soviets in this part of the world not Soviets in this part of the world. So, one, what is the perception of the Soviet soldier to the Western Allies' soldiers? What are their perception to the Western Allies' governments? A lot of the soldiers know that a lot of the equipment that they've been trained on, that they have around, is American or British design. So now you're fighting somebody who's given lots of substantial and identifiable material support, not just the idea that um, a bunch of parts or a bunch of resources showed up that you don't know where it came from. No, you know this tank was built in America or Britain or this artillery piece was built somewhere or whatever it is. They know that. And what would their reaction have been to now that they're fighting them? And then what do what are they willing to die for in the sense, you know, would they go, hey, yeah, the Americans are attacking. This is our chance. Let's shoot our, our um, commissars and um, revolt and march. We'll, we'll march on Moscow now. We'll throw the bastards out. Especially if, you know, the U.S. does a bit of a propaganda. We're not trying to conquer Russia. We, we're here to liberate Russia. If you want to go liberate Russia, fine. We won't even enter Russian territory. This line here, you know, at this point. We're just going to liberate Poland, Baltic states, and Romania. Do you want to die for Poland? You know, and I'm sort of kind of thinking that by doing that, you um, collapse the Stalinist regime, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, we do have that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right about that. The The Soviets were reliant about okay we have to stop these attacks up here they're not they're not getting us anywhere 
Let's see if we can eliminate these guys. You're right about getting those would be nice to... to eliminate, but we don't want to lose Madrid. Either, okay. And we're going to lose Madrid. Nazis robbed a lot of the country. Wow, it'd be cool to know what was on. The, yeah. had very good propaganda so now I don't know how effective their propaganda would be to non-americans that would be another question I just don't have that answer necessarily okay will you guys turn around and attack here you guys can because those are different things. Yeah, the Amber Chamber, I don't think... I think the Amber Chamber is still hidden away somewhere, or it was destroyed in the bombing of um, uh, Konigsberg. Um, that's sort of the official line that could be what happened, because obviously Amber burns really easily, or it's just still hidden away somewhere. I don't think anybody found it and then like lost it on the ship or anything. I think it's it's still the Germans hit it. Um, I have a suspicion because you know you've seen photos of like the salt mines or whatever um, filled with bags of things and crates that you know when they open up there's paintings and there's gold bars and there's other historical you know precious things, including, uh, what was it, the uh, um, Frederick the Great? Um, was it Frederick the Great or one of the, um, or maybe it was one of the other um, Kaiser's um, coffins, you know, and whatnot, buried away there. I have a suspicion not all of those were found. And so... Who would be the face against... Stalin. That's interesting. Anybody who cooperated with the Soviets wouldn't be wouldn't be suitable. I mean, cooperated with the, the Nazis would not be suitable. Um, because it has to look like liberation. Huh. That's interesting. I don't know. Um. Too bad Wrangel was dead, though he might have gotten too too caught up in the because he he was assassinated in my opinion, poisoned I think, um, uh, by the by the Soviets when he was living in Paris I think if I remember my history correct, um, but Wrangel would have been a great choice he was young enough to do it and would have been popular enough but he might have gotten caught up in the whole Nazi thing. Um, I don't know right offhand, but 
I, I mean, if he was alive, it would be I would go with Wrangel right offhand. But pretty story once the Soviet troops started asking why all the Lend-Lease tanks had U.S. stamped on it, on all the parts, and the commissars said re- reverse engineered the letters into an acronym, questioning Hitler's parentage. Hmm. Um, to me that sounds fanciful I yeah as I'm not saying you didn't hear that I could be I'm just going yeah maybe I don't know Where are my mountain no, here are my mountain troops? You go in. Oh no. You go there. Okay, you guys are getting never too much. You change your path of retreat. Just get the hell out of there because I don't want you cut off. Yeah, I hear you about the families, but if there was a general uprising against the commissars, I don't think that would have would have been a, a concern because who shot the commissars? No one knows. You know, right off because if you're going to win and march march on Moscow, you know, if, the, if you're having a, a Russian army march on Moscow, who knows who, who actually executed the commissars and who knows what's going on and. It would just be, yeah, let's do the T-34. Uh, because BI Black Ice is not um, yet ready for the new version of Hearts of Iron, or I would be. It's sort of as simple as that. And I didn't want to revert to the earlier version of Hearts of Iron 4. i sort of been waiting for it. That's sort of why I was doing the Hearts of Iron 3 stuff, just waiting for Black Ice. Or Inseek. I want to try Inseek um, mod. But again, I'm, I'm waiting for them to update it to current Hoi. No, I'm not saying get the commissars on your side. I'm just saying um, get the Soviet soldiers to revolt and shoot their commissars. Yeah, I don't know if you could get to somebody like Zukov and talk to him and convince him to to do it. Now he now see if you you have a figurehead like him, his family would definitely be, whatever it might have been. I have no idea. I presume he had a wife. I don't know because um, I don't know that much about him. Um, they would be ended for sure if you ever have a like a, a big public figure face, you know, like that would definitely be.
Okay, we're going to end the episode, not the live stream, but the episode here. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, and I do love hearing from you. What do you think about our topic of what the Soviet soldiers' reaction would be if they ended up at war with the Western allies? See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.